it is the sum total of output produced by the units of labor so tp is given by ap into l if you are going to change it if you are going to introduce a single unit as an input factor into the scenario will it change the output and if the answer is yes then we are achieving the marginal product you will not be able to bring in much variation short run means to say that the production is going to happen for a limited period of time good morning and welcome to the session 4 in the production and cost chapter 3 second puc economics where we are going to talk about the formulas why formulas are important is because in this particular chapter we are going to learn the different aspects the concepts that are important in terms of understanding the production and cost so right away let's first start getting to the understanding of production and we shall move further in terms of understanding the various concepts what is production it is a transformation of resources in to commodities which means to say that given an input if I can translate that input into a meaningful output then I am talking about production production is a collection of all inputs put together to bring into something meaningful purpose and for some objective so what is the production function that consists of the production function consists of the physical relationship between the factors called as the labor and the capital but then now if you're going to talk about the labor and capital which is very very important here you need to understand the functionality that's how we are giving the functionality here as y is equal to f of l comma k where y is the production gives rise to the functionality between L and K which is labor and capital now moving further now let's try to understand the first concept that is total product it is the sum total of output produced by the units of labor so TP is given by AP into L where we try to say that TP stands for total product AP stands for average product that is unit per labor into the units of labor L is equal to the units of labor so when I'm going to multiply AP into L that is product per unit of labor into units of labor then we will give rise to the total product next one is called as the marginal product it is the change in production as a result of unit change in input of a variable now p is equal to the change in the total production that has been given here let's try to understand this marginal product in depth what happens here is that most of the organizations in the world are never happy about the factor with the given output. They always want to produce more, they always want to take up an extra lead which means to say that somewhere down the lane they want the production to peak up at any given point of time when you want to increase your production you need to increase your inputs now inputs will come with a cost factor but then when we go back to economics we need to understand this concept marginal very clearly it says that change in total production as a result of unit change in input so can a single unit if we are going to change it, if you are going to introduce a single unit as an input factor into the scenario, will it change the output? And if the answer is yes, then we are achieving the marginal product. So for every small change in the output, there is going to be a considerable change in the output. Then we are going to talk about the marginal output factor, the marginal product factor very clearly. Now, the next one is average product. 
product as the word itself says average product which means to say that it is per unit production of variable fuel that means to say AP is equal to TP by L total product divided by labor AP is equal to the average product TP is total product and L is the labor factor so on an average basis whenever we are talking about average it is like an you know a summation it's like a benchmark altogether so whenever we say this word average we are very clear about this factor why because on an average what is the production on an average what is the functionality on an average what is the level altogether and based on that we take up the matter so on an average here we are talking about the average product is equal to total product divided by the labor functionality followed by the short run so how are we going to talk about the short run the time period during which a firm in order to make changes in its production can change only its variable factor but not the fixed factor is termed as short run so this is very very important for all of us to understand here the short run is actually trying to talk about a time period which a firm in order to make changes in its production can change only its variable factor so in a short run the main concept that you need to understand is the variability of the factors you will not be able to bring in much variation short run means to say that the production is going to happen for for a limited period of time so the time of production is very very small it's a big constraint altogether so within that given time frame you will not be able to change much of the factors so what we do here is that as far as possible in the short run we try to keep the factors fixed but then a little bit of variation that can happen is probably allowed so that's why we call it as a short run factor on the contrary when we are talking about the long run the time period in which a firm can change all the factors of production suppose as a company let me say here I have an ambition to produce something two years down the lane so which means to say that I have a time buffer period of 24 months so within this 24 months I can bring in a lot of changes I can think about what are the factors that are needed and what are the factors that do not have to come into production so in a long run curve you have the time you have the all considerations that can be taken into account change the production as and when you need and then you can start manufacturing then you can start scaling up the entire production activity so the long run production is always considered to be a very very important functionality here followed by the law of diminishing marginal product the law states that increase in the variable factor keeping all other factors constant the marginal product of the variable factor diminishes definitely yes this will diminish after a certain level of production so that's very very important for us so it is going to after a certain level of production it is going to come down and now the reason for operating of the law that is very very important for us when we talk about the optimum combination or the change in the factors of the combination now why we are bringing in this factor is that when you start understanding the production psychology over a period of time by utilizing n number of resources what happens is that the production ratio starts falling down which means to say that the law of diminishing product which means to say the marginal product of that firm will start coming down because you have excessively used the input so over a period of time due to the continuous production at some point you will not be able to produce extra products or marginal products and that is why we call this as the law of diminishing marginal product 
Now, the law of variable proportion, what does the law of variable proportion state? The law states that within an increase of a variable factor by keeping all other factors constant, initially the marginal product rises, no doubt about it, the marginal product will tend to rise. But after reaching a certain level of employment, it starts declining. So this is very, very important. The law states that increase in a variable factor there is a small increase that has been given keeping other factors constant so we are going to keep all other factors constant i'm just increasing one variable factor here so what happens initially the marginal product will rise but then after some time it will start declining so what are the stages according to the law is that there's an increasing return there is a diminishing return and there is a negative return so initially it might go up an increasing return then diminishing and then it falls down where we move to the negative return psychology altogether. So that's why law of variable proportion is very very important when we are trying to understand the production and cost factor. Now the returns to scale when a producer change all the factors of the production in terms of the same production the proportional to the relationship then the with the relationship between the output and input is known as returns to scale what we are looking here is that every input should give me a proportional output so when i'm going to talk about the relationship between input and output the returns to scale comes into picture this is a very very important concept why because to the amount of input that has been given we need to get an equal value of the output so that's why we bring in the returns to scale functionality now in this we are going to talk about constant returns to scale the first thing is that when a proportional increase in input results to an increase in output by same proportion so if you are giving one input the output also is increased by one so i'm saying constant return to scale increase in input will lead to increase in output by the same proportion very much important that is what we call it as constant return returns to scale now the next one is increasing returns to scale which means to say that when a proportional increase say i'm giving you one input then the output increases by two or by three then automatically increasing return by giving one input the output has now started growing up at a higher level so we call it as increasing returns to scale decreasing returns to scale very very important decreasing returns to scale when proportional all inputs results in increase in output but then it is less than the proportion that's very very important here why because i am increasing the input by one but then my output is in the decreasing format it becomes minus one increase in input but decrease in output is called as decreasing returns to scale now with that, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that all the information shared through this particular session will be of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming session, we shall try to understand some more factors of production and cost. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.